Hey guys, what's going on? Oscar with a special Transformers video review. You tell by the title, we're going to be taking a look at KFC Stacks, but my Stacks Pro, so we're going to be taking a look today at um, Transformers Age of Extinction Hound uh, Sweet Vehicle Mode. Oh no, I'm kidding. We're going to be taking a look at Stacks. Goodbye. So, first things first, this is not going to be a really long review. You know these quick reviews, I try to make them as quick as possible. So, let's go ahead and get the ball rolling. First is vehicle mode, just like his G1 count predecessor. It looks freaking amazing. This is from the guys at Keith Fantasy Club that gave us the, Mo the EVAI metal series. And of course, I got the black uh, Mugen guy, which uh, he sucked. So, first thing you want to know is how can you load cars onto them for? Well, let's go ahead and we can get a masterpiece Silver Streak here, load them up. He's just fine. Um, on top, actually, you remove the weapon. It's a place for weapon storage. Remove that bad boy. You could actually get a class six figure on there. Just this real quick. There we go. And then, um, if you really want to get creative, you know, uh, I can see a lot of other reviewers do this. Um, you can take a third party figure, like Fans Projects uh, Codex, load him up in his bad boy. And yeah, all seems well. So he rolls really fine. He's got rubber tires, a lot of chrome on here. Um, the cab is basically hollows because where the it's where the head goes. So other than that, of course, you got the posable missiles. They fit on here nice and tight, but in robot mode, they do not fit very well. So I had to actually put some a uh, uh, little bit of nail polish on them to make them stick a little better. So let's take blur away. We'll get chrome dome out of there. So. Of course, you can load guys in his rear <laughs> through the ramp right here, and as well as if you want to get uh, get really technical and load them like they do in real life on those double loader. That's what this truck reminds me of: is you put the ramp there, you get a figure on there, and kind of a lot of promotional photos of it. You got stuff like that. So, other than that, uh, it's a great color scheme, man. The vehicle mode is big, which I really, really like. I really enjoy it. Um, I never owned an Ultra Magnus from the G1 days, and this is being a bitch right now. There we go. So, I mean, I, I couldn't begin to tell you um, how this compares to the G1 counterparty. Of course, he came in a white Optimus Prime, but I wasn't really kind of a fan of the character. And, well, since I've been building my Masterpiece collection up really big, I figured I, I wanted Ultra Magnus. And because I'll admit I'm immensely impatient, I wasn't willing to work, wait for the Takar one. So I got this guy off Dub K Toys, um, really good price there, so I suggest you go ahead and check him out, link below. So let's go ahead and see what else we need to cover on here, oh nothing else, it's a loading truck, okay, you don't need to fucking waste time on this shit, yeah look, ooh he rolls, ooh. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the fun part, the transformation. Now obviously I'm going to speed this up, you'll see just what a floppy nightmare this thing really is. Woo! All right, that took forever to do. So here he is. He is a big boy. So if you want to see how he would scale with your classics collection, here he is with uh, Toy World Orion. He is gargantuan. He would be the size of a combiner. And here he is, uh, side by side comparison with uh, Hasbro's latest rendition of Ultra Magnus. That would be the Platinum Edition Ultra Magnus. This is the one my. Uh, Fiance got me for Christmas last year. Uh, he's all right. You know, it's a stupid gun gimmick. But other than that, he's he's good for your classics collection anyway. Unless you have you don't if you don't have the Fans Project Armor add-on set. 
Um, more importantly, you want to know how he scales with other masterpieces. So here he is side by side. Here he is scaled with uh, Soundwave, very, very big. And of course, here he is scaled with uh, probably the most popular masterpiece figure everywhere, um, Optimus Prime, MP10. Also, here he is with uh, my favorite masterpiece figure because I'm a Seeger fanboy, Thundercracker. So yeah, he's a big boy. And, um, you know, if you're a fan of the Ultra Magnus character, you know, and, you know, the, the last time we got an iteration of him at all was during the Beast Hunters and all that jazz from the Prime TV series, I strongly suggest you get this guy. So we'll go over a few points of articulation. Oh, whoa. We'll just fix this camera here because I'm a pro. So here we are. He's got decent arm articulation. Shoulder does too. The head, because he's so big, is on a ball joint. Um, it goes full 360. He can't look down very well, but he, he does look up, which makes for, as you can see, some of the photos I'll be that you saw in the beginning of the video. Um, <clears throat> hands rotate 360. Fingers are independently articulated, except for the thumb that's kind of in place. So you kind of give him devil horns or the finger. We're not doing that because we are not a 15 year old that hasn't learned to girl about girls yet. Legs bend. They are on a light ratchet. But they don't bend very much. The legs are also on a ratchet. Uh, there are swivels where the for the right at the knees there, which kind of makes standing him up kind of a pain. There you go. His feet also they're on ball joints, so it does kind of help whenever you do manage to get him in a cool pose. He moves at the waist as well. So other than that, you're asking yourself, should I wait for the Takara or should I get this bad boy? Now, before we go ahead and finish this video, I just wanted to say, um, if you listen to the podcast I'm on every week, Shattercast Uncut, you know that I basically um, flipped my shit at KFC, because uh, they had announced their first run <clears throat> of KFC figures were going to be unique from their second. So, um, the only things I've seen so far that are different are like uh, these red pieces that are here in the waist for the first run figure. They were, I believe they were blue. I might be wrong. But other than that, it's not a bad figure. The plastic feels top notch, you know. Um, doesn't feel like it was fresh out of a 3D printer. Um, the paint apps are great. I have no paint chips. I have the right hands on this guy. But the only thing that is, uh, I, I felt I had a problem with here are the shoulder missiles. Uh, they don't connect very well with this hole right here. I believe the hole's too big. So, again, I had to rock some nail polish to kind of get this problem addressed accordingly but uh, now now they're on there fine and the gun of course the gun uh, when you start you just flip the handle back down and inside his darling little mitts you can see he's got some slots there so he holds it you don't need to fucking show that so there you are you have to sit through a 45 minute review on this guy you got you got it down pat this is KFC's Citizen Stacks, homage to Robert Stack, who played him in the 86 film, supposedly. So, do you want? if you are a fan of Ultra Magnus, this is totally a figure I suggest you buy. And if you are not a fan, and please save yourself the absurd amount of money this thing cost me. I could have had a hegemon for what I paid for this guy. No, I'm kidding. Alright, until then, I'm Oscar Alonzo. Have a nice day somewhere else. Penis.